Thank you. And uh, it sounded like we were about to walk out the door. I do have a very quick little presentation and a different take on, on Trevor Pearcy. Uh, thank you to John um, and thank you to all of the presenters. They've been, been very powerful presentations. CSIRO, as we go through a digital transformation, a digital science transformation, we're actually right now talking about uh, values and bringing values into that, uh, uh, that conversation. Um, so thank you, and thank you to uh, Wayne Fitzsimmons and the PC Foundation for putting on uh, this event. Um, CSIRO is very pleased to be a sponsor of the event, uh, and uh, we're very pleased to be keeping the, the legacy of Trevor Pearcy and Trevor Pearcy's, I guess, cohort of pioneers uh, alive. Trevor Pearcy's name is kept alive within CSIRO in many ways, one of which is uh, we named one of our supercomputers uh, after him, so that sits in the Canberra Data Centre. It is something that, that you can, if you come and have a talk to me, have a, have a tour of, and Canberra Data Centre are very proud of their CSIRO uh, computing facilities, it's like a, it's a tourist facility within the Canberra, uh, the commercial Canberra data centre. But what I wanted to do just now is to talk a little bit about a different aspect uh, of, of Trevor Pearcy and hopefully um, to, to take us on a positive journey um, to, to where research computing is at the moment in Australia. But I promise I'll be quick and we can then go out the door. My colleague who uh, is sitting up uh, the, the back, Robert Bell, did a little bit of research for us about um, uh, Trevor Pearcy and, and the early days of computing. And, and one of the things that many of you perhaps will know is that in um, 1962, which was a very good year for all sorts of reasons, Trevor Pearcy and others convinced the Commonwealth Government, convinced the Commonwealth Government, it was a very difficult thing to do at any point in time, to uh, allocate the amazing amount of three million pounds to uh, research computing. My team, I didn't ask them to, I didn't check their facts, but they came up with it's roughly... One, sorry, there's a one in there that shouldn't be there. It is 89 million. 80, 89 million, sorry, sorry Robert. So anyway, we'll just, we'll just get rid of that. But 89 is still a very large number, right? <laughs> yes. 89 million dollars, buying power of three million pounds. What was that to do? It was to basically establish a network uh, for universities, CSIRO. I love the way CSIRO spelt in the old days with the, the dots. We should get back to doing that. And government departments and agencies um, to basically have access to a network and uh, computing facilities uh, for research. As we know that, uh, or as maybe we don't know, that uh, ended up in being a very nice building on Black Mountain. Um, and a network that was the core of what became Arnet uh, and basically computing facilities in, in Canberra, I think Melbourne and Sydney, uh, Robert um, is right. Now I get, get, get a little bit of a sad story. Uh, so this is Sirenet. So we tried multiple ways to do that collaboration between CSRO and the universities. And so this was a, a bureau service uh, version of, of that. This is the same building. Uh, the, sad, the story gets a little bit sad here, though, in that the, the building is actually full of asbestos, uh, and so, uh, and it's also it was also in, in pretty poor condition. So unfortunately, that's what the building looks like now. In fact, there's nothing left of it, apart from I'll just go back this little bit, this big bit over here, which was built a bit more robustly in the late '60s. So inside that building uh, is now the computing facilities uh, on Black Mountain. So we can store around about 20 petabytes to 30 petabytes uh, of data. Uh, we have uh, test and development facilities on Black Mountain. That's where we do our innovative research into uh, cyber security, uh, um, computing, uh, small scale HPC testing and all of that sort of thing. So there is still computing on Black Mountain. Uh, in the ACT. But I guess what I wanted to end with is the, the positive message that um, today in terms of collaborative research computing uh, um, we have a number of things that, that are coming to pass. So the Pawsey Supercomputing Centre uh, which sort of comes under my wing within CSIRO has just released its tender for a new uh, supercomputer. 
NCI, so that's the National Computing Infrastructure just down the hill from me at the ANU, uh, and uh, CSIRO and the Bureau of Meteorology, so Gilbert and I spend uh, quite a bit of time thinking about NCI, is just installing and commissioning its new supercomputer, uh, Gardi. And the other thing is that uh, we've convinced the Empress program to actually start to think, or not to start to think, they've actually already uh, mapped it out, what 10 years of funding this kind of infrastructure would look like. So for one of the first times since 1962, there possibly have been moments in, in between, we actually have some certainty of research supercomputing for at least the next decade. So with the commissioning of, of Gardi, uh, with the commissioning of whatever the supercomputer will be named, Magnus II or whatever at, uh, at Pawsey, we're likely to have around about 40, 40 petaflops of supercomputing capability uh, in Australia. Uh, and so I think that puts us in a very good place. And uh, I'd like to say uh, on behalf of CSIRO, on behalf of uh, all of my colleagues in, in research computing, uh, thank you. Uh, Trevor Pearcy. So that's me.